Thanks, Austin. Thanks for that introduction. Um, good morning. It's my pleasure to uh, be your keynote this morning about a topic which should concern all of us increasingly in the months and uh, years ahead, which is that of how do we build uh, and, and develop and implement ethical and explainable AI systems. Uh, it's a topic that has gathered a significant amount of interest given all the major tech CEOs have been expounding the importance of AI and how it's going to change the world. Over the last few years, we've been hearing AI as the next big shift in the human-machine collaboration, everything from this Google CEO to Microsoft CEO and IBM CEO, Ginny, talking about that every decision uh, will be impacted by cognitive computing or AI-powered computing. And that's, in essence, what caught my interest and something we want to dig into later today. So how do you start bringing AI into the enterprise when it has this very fundamental problem, uh, one of uh, operating as a black box? Um, so as we all know, or most of us know, that AI systems learn and evolve over time. Unlike rules-based systems, AI systems have this ability, this powerful ability to learn from patterns. And they contain many hidden decision processing layers, which makes the auditability and explainability challenge a big one for enterprises. It's one thing to say it's a dog or a cat using a GNN or a DNN model. It's another thing to say for a healthcare company, I denied a claim, the patient died, I'm getting sued for $40 million, and I don't know why my algorithms did what they did. So one of the big things that companies are now tackling with is how do you move AI from a black box AI explainable AI. And in that shift is the opportunity for us to make sure that these systems are biased and fair and are complying to uh, major regulations. So the question for us, for this conference and for the months and years ahead for me is how do we design trust uh, in a world that's increasingly interested to machines? You know, more and more decisions about what movies you watch, what music to listen to, who you date, what school you go to, how much loan you can get to buy your next home are all being decided by algorithms, um, by machines. And um, the interesting part is not all of these are machine learning models. A lot of them are statistical learning and rule systems, and most of them work as black boxes. So the challenge for us as a community is to make sure that we are building systems that build trust. Uh, I call this building trust as a service, just like we had security as a service that enabled the enterprise web trust as a service is what will enable enterprise AI. So we should be able to answer as business executives, as regulators, and uh, as customers, uh, these fundamental questions. Can I trust this? Is this fair? Is this explainable? And that to me is the essence of building ethical and responsible AI systems. Um, the journey for me on this started about seven years ago. I had the honor and the privilege to be IBM's first general manager of IBM Watson. And when I took the Jeopardy playing machine and I started building um, a, a commercial system out of it, um, I remember at one meeting, uh, this anguished uh, gentleman looked up at me and says, oh, so you're putting Watson to work for cancer uh, and it will give you diagnosis of cancer and doctors are going to follow that. And my wife is now suffering from cancer. So is this an Obama death panel machine? Uh, this is the whole debate going on in the US back then about healthcare and Obama and others. So it sort of shook me up to the core that I realized that it's not just about building systems that are come up with evidence and, and, and predictions, but it's also building human trust so that that gentleman over there doesn't feel that the machine is deciding whether his wife is gonna get the right care, whether she survives or not. Similarly, I had um, doctors uh, when I walked in to the top uh, cancer care centers and I said, we're gonna put Watson to work here for you. And the question from the doctor was, okay, it's one thing for you to play the game of Jeopardy. It's another thing for me to explain to me, why is it that Watson said that I should use this particular treatment path? Can it explain? Um, and at that time, that capability didn't, didn't exist. And uh, it's that, uh, those two moments that set me on this journey uh, to then become a venture capitalist and to invest in ethical and trusted AI companies, which is what I do. And I also um, then about three years ago started a nonprofit called AI Global, uh, which is a 501c3, which basically uh, for the non-Americans is meaning it's a registered nonprofit, uh, which is focused on promoting ethical and responsible AI systems. 
Uh, I call this more of a do tank versus the think tank. The way AI Global is different from a lot of other AI nonprofits out there is I focus and I want this group to focus on this opportunity around uh, implementing and doing stuff around building ethical AI system, not just talking about it. And um, you know, it, it's also reason by the fact that every industry is going through these things, particularly healthcare, insurance, and banking. Uh, claims frauds and abuse, you know, they, are, they don't have explainability today. Loan decisions. Um, uh, there's a large bank in the US that said, um, you know, while well, it was uh, challenged by someone saying that a black family of four making $160,000 was being given the same amount of um, credit for mortgage as a white family of four making $45,000. How do you explain that, that bias? And uh, the bank's thing was, well, it's a proprietary model and um, you know, they're not biased, but these things are happening today. Healthcare, um, insurance, um, again, um, Facebook with what they did with the department. So I can spend an hour just on this slide walking through different examples of areas where AI is already running rogue and creating systemic biases and discrimination. So the whole focus of AI Global was to build a nonprofit that promotes practical and responsible use of AI by governments and businesses. And we serve as an accelerator. Like I said, we serve as a do tank where we take a people and ethics first approach to AI rather than a data and machine learning model first view to AI. We believe in cross-sector participation. There's lots of good learning from finance and healthcare and retail and insurance. We also believe in being uh, open and uh, not having any of the large vendors sort of locking them in with their tools or techniques. And that's what got us going. One of the first things we published then was this, AI, this thing called an AI global responsible AI framework. These are the five uh, basic dimensions of building ethical AI systems, ensuring there is visibility and permission on data rights, ensuring explainability of machine generated insights, making sure these decisions are not biased. Uh, also on the other side, making sure that these things are not spoofable. Uh, it was proven uh, that an autonomous car could easily be taken off the road by introducing two to 3% noise in an image, which is undetectable to the human eye but a stop sign could be made to uh, be seen as a yield sign to an autonomous car by people um, you know, poisoning uh, certain uh, images. So, and then last but not the least, compliance. So how do you make sure that GDPR and HIPAA regulations or FCA mandates, how do you make sure your AI system is complying to those? So these five dimensions made up what we call as the AI global responsible AI framework. We open source this, and it is driven from a human first perspective so that different people ranging from a chief data officer to a data scientist to a customer um, or a board member can answer fundamental questions like, are we being fair to our customers in particularly vulnerable group? And, and in these days of um, you know, uh, the post COVID world that we live in and this Black Lives Matter world we live in, uh, that question is, is even more important than it ever was because board members are concerned about financial risks, about reputational damage, and about loss of customer and public trust in the brand. So how do you help them answer those questions? Data officers, uh, making sure that their data and models are operating consistently to the security patterns that have been put in place. Um, people like um, product managers saying, how do I guide my customers to a better outcome uh, by using AI, and then data scientists saying, okay, how do I understand um, my models um, are performing to the best of its um, you know, ability? So all of these questions is what we have focused on in terms of operationalizing a set of tools and methodologies in AI Global. And what we do is we publish as a nonprofit three things. Uh, we publish, number one, a responsible AI trust index. Um, think of this almost like a FICO-like credit score. So imagine if every model had a risk score, uh, just like every human being has a credit score. Uh, so we published this um, an open source, this trust index that supports a good and responsible AI design. And um, it's now being adopted by multiple companies as a way to start um, scoring and labeling their models uh, with this trust index. And one of the other companies that I work with called Cognitive Scale, they have built this uh, 
trust index scanner um, that actually generates these things without knowing anything about the internals of the model. It gives you a risk score. Um, so, so that's the first thing we publish. And, and uh, there are a lot of other large companies like Microsoft and PwC and IBM and others who are engaging around this responsible AI trust index. Second thing we do is uh, we published a user-friendly open source tool uh, called the Design Assistant um, that allows people to walk through the key aspects of responsible AI. So it's almost like an online tool that gives you guidance on what are the points in your model design and your data design that you need to be worried about uh, to ensure that your models are responsible and ethical. And last but not the least, we have this um, a community, an open source com a resource online community that is a portal for publishing news articles and templates. So to me, again, shifting the conversation from thinking about responsible AI to doing, um, you know, with uh, uh, in, in putting products and processes in place for enabling responsible AI is where my focus and my mission is. Um, again, um, being that this is a nonprofit, I don't feel um, you know, hesitant in talking about the work here because this is something that the world needs, the government needs. I was in Israel um, uh, late last year talking to the D9 countries, and I remember the uh, representative of one of the smaller countries came right up to me and said, my government is, is implementing AI, you know, left, right, and center, but we have no tools to understand how is it not going to discriminate against groups of people. So having this open source tools and open online tools, our hope is that countries and businesses who can't afford to put in a lot of skills can use this tool as a way to start measuring and testing and designing uh, more robust and more ethical and responsible AI systems. Um, as I look ahead, I believe that for this audience and for this conference and other conferences like this, this need for trusted AI is going to get only bigger with time, particularly in um, industries like banking and healthcare, where the number of automated decisions are going higher. And we absolutely need to make sure that as a community, we are looking at this topic as seriously as we looked at security. I believe trust as a service is going to be as big a market in the coming years as security as a service is as a market. So um, my last uh, request to you and um, advice to you is to get engaged in this through three things, through educating, promoting, and supporting. Um, educate yourself about the promise and perils of AI. There's a lot of hype in this area. Really look at what is the promise and what are the perils around trusted systems. Uh, promote uh, and, and question and challenge your teams on building responsible AI systems, and last but not the least, become a member of nonprofit like AI Global to start supporting these initiatives. With that, um, uh, I thank you again for the time this morning, and uh, back to you, Austin.